This is the VNM Direct Drive Wheelbase. This 11 kilogram, 32 newton meter monster is VNM's effort at making a high end direct drive wheelbase with great build quality and strong functionality. And earlier this year, I showed you a prototype direct drive wheelbase from VNM, which is now installed at the Racecraft Sim Center here in Perth. But this is a full retail, mass manufactured sample, and it's my pleasure to review this for you today. Of course, this video wouldn't be possible without VNM and Racecraft, which are two groups that I've come to really respect. Now, this wheelbase is going back to Racecraft in a week or so, but VNM has pallets of these ready to ship out to their distributors, so you'll be able to buy yours really soon. Stick around and let's see what this wheelbase has to offer. So this is everything that comes in the box with the VNM Direct Drive wheelbase. So let's start with the boring stuff. We have some cables and VNM always includes full retail USB cables. We have a USB A to B and a USB A to C. And we'll see what the different functionality of those cables is on the wheelbase later. There's also a full set of Allen keys. Again, VNM always includes a complete set, even if you don't need every single size, there's always a full set with VNM gear. And then of course we have nuts and bolts, a few T-nuts as well. And these are divided into three segments. So that's for the wheelbase, that would be for the quick release, and this is for the emergency stop. We have a power supply. So this is 48 volts and 10 amps, so 480 watts. Pretty beefy, but VNM did point out that a SimiCube Ultimate uses a thousand watt power supply. There is a AC power adapter with an inline power switch. Now, I did notice on the wheelbase that there's no power switch on the wheelbase itself, so you'll have to power on and off with the AC mains line switch, which is not my favorite. Simagic do the same thing and it does work. Um, I do prefer having a power switch on the wheelbase, but you know, we'll take this one, that's fine. We have the cable for the emergency stop. So that leaves us with just the interesting stuff that's in front of us. And I'm gonna start with the emergency stop because it's quite simple. It is an emergency stop and it's something that most of us will actually never use, but this is solid aluminum and it's heavy. And I don't have my Simagic Alpha Ultimate anymore because that did go back to Racecraft, but the emergency stop on that was far smaller. Um, it works in much the same way. You push it to stop and you twist it to release it. I don't think there's really much else to say. All anodized aluminum, very, very solid, and should be pretty easy to mount because there's these big slots and the included hardware, of course, to install that. Let's talk about the quick release now. So aside from the direct drive wheelbase, VNM have also developed their own quick release from scratch. And this is it here. And at first glance, it's definitely reminiscent of the HRS Zero Play quick release, which is very well regarded, where there is a trapezoidal male with a corresponding trapezoidal female. And when you slide it in and close the lever, it forces a little polymer dome up into the bottom to secure the two pieces together. Now, there's a couple of things of note. It's definitely very, very large. I have a zero play wheel side here and you can definitely see the size is quite a lot bigger on the VNM. There are some unique things about this. So one, we can see that there is a hole on the wheel side quick release and a corresponding hole on the wheel base side of the quick release. And they've got these little mounting holes and that is going to be for a future electrical connection between the wheel base and the wheel. And I've spoken to VNM about this and it's not included as standard, but there will be an optional accessory to add on a USB slip ring to the front of the wheelbase that then passes USB connection through the wheelbase to your wheel via the quick release. Now, another thing about the quick release here is just like the wheel side, the wheelbase side quick release is quite large. And if we have a look at the attention to detail, the stainless steel lever here has a slightly rough finish. It's definitely been polished, but there's a couple of machining grooves that are still in there. And if we have a look at the way that this would mount onto the motor, the lever mechanism actually blocks the top and the bottom holes. So you'd either mount them with four bolts onto the wheelbase or disassemble the, um, mount the QR onto the wheelbase with six bolts and then reassemble the lever assembly. One thing I did note is that it is adjustable just like the zero play wheelbase for the tension in the little polymer dome that gets forced into the wheel side QR. But this is adjusted just by knurled edges and fingers only. There's no hex key or other adjustability. And that is a little bit inconvenient because you do need to get your fingers into the QR there to give it a good turn. And you do end up scratching your nails against the 
aluminium here. So I would like to see a little hex adjustment or possibly beveling the aluminium in this side of the QR, just so it's a little bit easier on the fingernails. Otherwise, in my hands, I found that this quick release was very easy to use. It goes in very easily and it locks in very securely. Of course, having the adjustment helps with that. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how this works in practice. And now let's have a look at the wheelbase. So this is what a lot of you may not even know VNM were working on, but uh, yes, 32 Newton meters, which is way more torque than any of us need. I'm gonna come right here and say it. This is probably not the wheelbase for me because I run my wheelbase at between five and eight Newton meters. So there is no way I'm gonna be doing a full force speedback challenge on this. But I'm interested to see what VNM have been able to do in terms of their software tunability, the force feedback fidelity, and so on. There's a couple of things that are of interest here. So common to a lot of the direct drive wheelbases out there, we have a industrial servo here. So this is an off the shelf motor from some manufacturer and VNM have tacked on their encoder, power supply, um, all their logic into the back of it. And there's just a little join seam here, which is exactly what you see on like a Symagic Alpha or so on. Now, if we turn and have a look at the back of the wheelbase here, then there's a couple of connections here. We have USB type B, USB type C, which is labeled as CAN2. We have a couple of MOLES connectors. One is listed as CAN1 and the other is for the emergency stop. There's a little reset button here, which I'm hoping that I won't need to use, but I'm sure that it'll come in handy when it needs to be. And of course we have the MOLEX connector for the 48 volt input. If we turn the wheelbase to the front now, we do see the nose of the wheelbase. So nice to see that this is a production version of the nose versus the very much prototype nose that was on the prototype that I looked at earlier in the year. And it isn't immediately obvious because everything looks quite proportional, but everything on this is huge. And I have a Symagic Alpha Mini here to give you a point of reference. So, the motor, the control logic, the nose of the wheelbase, everything is so much bigger on the VNM. And uh, one of the things is if you look at the Symagic quick release, it has quite a narrow nose and the shaft is kind of moderate size. The VNM nose is a full 70 millimeter PCD. And then the nose of the wheelbase actually steps down. So it actually starts off as bigger up the front. And if you actually have a look at the side of the wheelbase here, and if you look right down the center, you'll see that straight out of the servo, there's actually just a very narrow shaft. So all of this width is nothing to do with what's inside the motor at all. Um, I did speak to VNM about this and they said that the size of this was necessary to factor for the slip ring USB connection, which is coming a bit later. Ultimately, visually, it looks very heavy and chunky. And you know, that can go either way. You might either like it or you might not, but it doesn't make any difference to the usability of something like this, especially a motor with this much torque. An extra few grams on the shaft is not going to affect the force feedback at all. This is going to have enough power to drive any wheel you want at any strength that you like. In terms of mounting, VNM have a pretty standard front mount pattern. Now these holes are threaded and there's reasonable clearance around the back of them. Um, since they're threaded, you're not going to need to uh, put nuts behind them anyway. Um, there's no provision for any other mounting for this type of wheelbase. But if you are buying a 32 Newton meter wheelbase, you will be front mounting your servo. There's no doubt about that. I myself will be installing this one onto a front mount unit from Simcor. My first ever drive on this wheelbase was really positive with virtually no setup. I pulled off the Symagic Alpha Mini, bolted on the VNM DD, and without any tweaks to the iRacing or VNM settings, I found the driving experience super intuitive. The steering was quite light, but I found myself easily and naturally catching slides on cold tires, and generally, I was instantly comfortable with the force feedback. For a straight out of the box experience, this was impressive. Then I looked deeper into the VNM and iRacing force feedback settings and started dialing things in. The first thing was to enable max torque. VNM has built in a limited torque default mode, just like the Fanatec podium bases, and will only unlock the full 32 Newton meter potential of the motor if you find the setting and activate it. I think this is a thoughtful safety feature. There's sliders available to tune damper, inertia, friction, and spring forces. And before long, I had this wheelbase tuned perfectly to my liking on this VNM GT steering wheel. 
There's options to save and load profiles, so in terms of functionality, the software feels very complete and user-friendly. The emergency stop cuts talk immediately, but still reports wheel position to the game, and deactivating the emergency stop sees immediate resumption of force feedback. The QR is absolutely rock solid, and the force feedback to my hands feels perfectly intuitive and refined. VNM tell me this product has been three years in the making, and the force feedback definitely feels like they've been refining it for a long time. I switched out the GT steering wheel for this 350mm round rim. Such a large rim makes it easy for you to overpower weaker bases, but this is not a problem on the VNM. Just turn the force feedback up a bit and you're good to go. I think this is a real strength of hugely powerful wheel bases like this. You always know you have the headroom to turn the power up if you want to, even if you're like me and run the base at 25% of its potential most of the time. I experienced very few issues with this wheelbase. The main one was that when I centered the wheel in the software, it wasn't actually center, it was 360 degrees to the left, which meant that when I turned the wheel 90 degrees left, I hit a soft lock instead of turning one turn plus 90 degrees. I got in touch with VNM about this and they literally fixed this bug in minutes. Also on my round rim, you can see that the data port of the quick release is partially obscured by the rim itself. And VNM say that if you do get the USB pass-through kit, they will have a 25mm hub extension, which has a USB plug on it as well. So this isn't going to be an issue. Other than that, my experience installing and using the VNM direct drive wheelbase has been really positive. No big issues at all, and the issues that I did bring up were fixed immediately, which is very true to what I've experienced with VNM in the past. The force feedback experience was really good, even with no tuning straight out of the box. It was really natural and intuitive, and I was setting competitive times straight away. This wheelbase is big and heavy, so it's definitely a two-person job to install. And the shaft is large, which is just an aesthetic issue, I think, above all. Um, if you are someone who likes to get their monitor really, really low between the wheelbase and the wheel, the fact that the shaft is so large will restrict how low you can mount that monitor. But one thing that I do like about VNM products in general is that they're very serviceable. So if there ever are any mechanical issues, it's quite straightforward to dismantle and repair, especially with the support that VNM offers via Discord. In terms of mounting this wheelbase, it appears to be a fairly standard mounting pattern. It bolted straight onto my SimCore front mount system, which was designed a few years ago. So I'm guessing that it will bolt onto pretty much all front mount systems that are out there. Pricing from VNM for their wheelbase is 1,280 US dollars. Of course, check with your local retailers because they'll factor in things like shipping and local taxes. But for that price, for the spec of the force feedback that you're getting, I think it's really competitive, which is in true VNM fashion, which is to provide a really high-end product for a moderate price. The force feedback quality, the tunability, the drivability of this wheelbase is really top-notch. The quick release works really well. It's easy and it's really secure. So the quality is really all there. Overall, I would say that the refinement isn't quite as high as something like a Symagic Alpha Ultimate because the Symagic Alpha wheelbases offer nice quality of life features like an inbuilt wireless steering wheel connection, also a number of different mounting options, not just the front, they have side and bottom mounts as well. So I think the VNM direct drive wheelbase is a really good product and it's probably going to suit people who really like to tinker, who like to dismantle things, who like to DIY because the shaft is easy to dismantle and in fact you will need to dismantle part of it to install the USB pass through slip ring that's coming soon. Or for people who are just fans of VNM in general and I definitely subscribe to that group. I think that they've been a really nice group of guys and every one of their products that I've paid my own money for, I've been really pleased with my experience there. But I think in this environment where so many different companies have really really fleshed out direct drive options. The VNM direct drive is still very much an enthusiast level product rather than something that the everyday sim racer would be able to just plug in and get the most of with very little input. With that in mind, I do think the VNM direct drive has a market. It's probably not the mass market, especially with such high torque. Like I said myself, I don't need this much torque, but I found that the driving experience was really, really good, even when I ran it way underneath its performance ceiling at 20, 25% of its capability. I had a really, really good driving experience with this. And I also found it really intriguing to take apart the quick release and see what they've done differently. And I'm pretty keen to see the USB slip ring in action. Hopefully I'll be able to update you guys on that soon. Anyways, I think that pretty much covers everything that I found with the VNM Direct Drive. Overall, I'm really impressed with what VNM were able to put together. The force feedback is really detailed and as high quality as anything else I've ever driven. And as VNM said before, they have been working on this for about three years. And when I joined their Discord about that long ago, I definitely saw 
saw that they were making progress on lots of different components of the direct drive system. I didn't realize that they were actually putting together one of these until relatively recently. And it's been such a privilege to be able to show you guys on YouTube. So make sure you like and subscribe. I'm definitely working on getting lots of cool and interesting content and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.